Hey, it's Nurse Mike from Simple Nursing. Ever read an NCLEX question and think, what the heck are they even asking me? Well, you're not alone. Those questions are actually built to trick you. That's why we're kicking off this new series using the Simple Nursing Question Bank to show you exactly how to tackle them. Joining me is one of our NCLEX experts, Nurse Allison. Hey everyone, I'll show you how to break down tricky questions, cut the fluff, and find the right answer fast. Let's dive in. Hi everyone, I'm Nurse Allison, and today we're going to be doing some practice questions and breaking down EKG med surge NCLEX style questions to show you not only how to answer these specific questions, but also walk you through the rationale and reasoning behind every answer. We're going to be doing this using the Simple Nursing Question Bank. And so what I love about these is these questions are written by former and current question writers to give you a realistic view of what to expect on your NCLEX and on your nursing school exams. I also love that you can track your progress and identify your weak areas using insights here on the right. So you can see over time and you can look at old exams or see the practice questions you just did and find those weak areas so that way you can improve on them. So first things first, let's pick a topic. Today, we're going to focus on, again, EKG from the med search focus. Here in the question bank, you can filter by topic, difficulty, or NGN versus NCLEX style questions. And so I'm going to pick a few questions, create a quick quiz. I'm going to keep tutor mode on. I call it study mode because you'll get to see immediately after each question if we got it right or wrong and see those rationales as to why. Sometimes I like to turn it off, especially if I'm trying to mimic a practice exam or if I'm trying to improve on my endurance. In that instance, you'll still get to see those rationales, but you'll wait until you finish the question set and then you'll be able to review all the rationales afterwards at the end. So it kind of trains your brain to practice how you're going to have to perform. So it's nice to kind of switch between the two and to be able to do that. Also, you can see that here we have over 4,000 questions in the question bank which allows you to create unlimited questions over such a variety of different topic areas specialized to your needs. Also, there's even an option to re-quiz over questions you've gotten incorrect in the past. So I love that, especially, let's say you already had a quiz over EKGs, and then it was again covered on an exam, and then you're going to have it on the comprehensive final. That would allow you to go back and look at the questions that you got incorrect to see what were those sticking points? What are those areas of greatest opportunity to make sure that you review before that final exam? And to see, did you actually fix those holes in your parachute? Did you repair those and find the problem and make it better? So now what we're going to do is I'm going to select some questions. I'm going to select med surge. And as you can see, now I have a ton of subtopic areas. Select EKG. And then I'm just going to select 10 questions. And again, this is such a time saver because it personalizes it to those topics that we want to focus on. So let's dive into the quiz. I'll answer a few questions and show you how it works. And as I go through, I want you to notice that how each of the questions have hints and rationales built in. And even if you get it wrong, you're learning the reason behind why it's the correct or incorrect answer, which is so important for your success. Here it says, a nursing student understands that a client with which arrhythmia will most likely need an immediate pacemaker. Okay, so this one. So I see that there's two things that are opposites, kind of. You know, so I see V-fib, AFib, and then third degree heart block and first degree heart block. And so usually when there's two opposites, it's probably one of them. And for this, especially if there's a block in communication, because remember that when we're looking at those EKGs, we're looking at that electrical activity in wave form. And we want that when the atria have the activity, it goes along and goes around and travels to the ventricles and gives a squeeze. And we want those atria and the ventricles to be working together. They don't have to. Third degree is also complete heart block. There is a complete block in communication between the atria and the ventricles. So the atria are doing their thing even and consistently to each other. And the ventricles are even and consistent, but they're not doing it together. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. Complete heart block. And so they're going to need a pacemaker. And so again, this walks you through the rationales on why things are correct and incorrect. So let's say even if you're unsure and you get lucky, it's going to help you feel more confident in why that was the correct answer. 
For the next one, a nurse caring for a client on telemetry interprets the EKG as having a bundle branch block based on the following characteristics. And so again, so if we have a block of sorts, it's going to take longer for communication to get somewhere. And once again, we have two things that are kind of opposite and two things that are opposite. We have a narrow QRS segment and a wide QRS segment. Then we have an inverted PR interval and a spiked PR interval. So especially for this, again, there's a bundle branch block. It's going to take longer for that information to get through that bundle branch. So it's going to cause that QRS to be wider in the process. And again, the tips and tricks are so helpful in not only seeing what was the right answer, but the why behind it. For the next one, a nurse is caring for a client who complain of sudden weakness, palpitations, and shortness of breath. The following EKG is depicted below. I'm looking at that P wave. I see wiggle, 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 floppy, 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 then a QRS. Floppy, 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 QRS. Floppy, 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 QRS. So I know that anytime I see flopping around, that's fibrillation. And especially if it's the P wave that's flopping around, that's going to be our atrial fibrillation because that P wave is going to correspond to the atrial activity. If it was a flutter, I was like to say that with a little stutter because it has the sawtooth, sawtooth. So the ta-ta, sawtooth, sawtooth. So that P wave, instead of flopping around, it does a sawtooth action. So this one again is that atrial fibrillation. And that's one of those ones that you got to know by sight. So especially, I love the simple nursing video on the EKG strips that you got to know by sight. It has all the tips and memory tricks to make it stick in your head so that way you'll remember it when it comes up on exam. So I highly recommend watching that if you haven't already. It's going to help you do so much better on these questions. For the next one, a client has confirmed second degree type 2 AV block and a heart rate of 45 beats per minute. The Nurse expects the following treatment for the condition. Select all that apply. I like to call atropine because it takes heart to the top of the pine tree. And we use that for symptomatic bradycardia. So especially with bradycardia this low, first of all, I want to assess my patient would be one of the big things. But I'm going to say potentially, especially since it's a second degree heart block. But again, are they symptomatic? Because some people can have a low heart rate and that's normal and expected. A temporary pacemaker, I know that we do that with a third degree heart block, so I'm thinking maybe digoxin. Digoxin digs for a deeper contraction, so it does help to improve the contraction, but when it digs for a deeper contraction, it helps that cardiac contractility, but in doing so, it makes each pump of the heart more effective, so it actually slows the heart rate down more, which we don't want here because we're already going too low and slow enough. Adenosine, I always like to remember you put the heart rate down in the den with adenosine. So we like to give that if like the heart rate's going super fast. So SCT is super fast. And that's when we put the heart rate down in the den when it's going super fast. So I'm not going to give adenosine. And then we have defib immediately at 200 joules. Okay, so I know it's not digoxin because that's going to make it too much slower. I know it's not adenosine. So I'm going to say maybe atropine for the bradycardia and temporary pacemaker. Let's see. And those both are correct. So again, giving those rationales as to why things aren't correct. I wasn't sure about the defib. So remember, when in doubt, go without for select all the ply. If you're unsure, don't pick it. Otherwise, it can subtract from what you got correct. And see how great detail these rationales are. And they help you know, again, the rationales, why things are correct and incorrect. So that way it can help you when you get questions on the same area again. Now for this one, the nurse is caring for a client with a below rhythm seen on the EKG monitor. The client becomes short of breath and begins sweating. Which interventions and in which order does the nurse follow for treatment of this? So this, I'm looking, this is going super fast, uh, but it looks kind of normal-ish. But again, they're right but up on each other. So I said before, when two things are opposite, it's probably one of them. Also, if two things are too similar, it's oftentimes neither. So immediately what's jumping out is I see carotid massage twice. So I don't like that. Well, also then I remember that SVT super fast. We like to put the heart rate down in the den with adenosine because it's going super fast. So we want to slow it down. So we would, I want to pick number two, bearing down a hate up valsalva maneuver. 
because that's going to stimulate bradycardia because it stimulates cranial nerve 10, which is going to slow down the heart rate. Also down in the den with the den C and that synchronized cardioversion, that controlled shock where we sink and sedate. We're going to try to get them out of this rhythm. And that's correct. And again, those great rationales that we love. For the next one, the nurse is caring for a client who has hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia. Okay, so I like to think magnesium mellows. So if we have hypomagnesium, we have too low, too little mellow. So we're not mellow at all, basically. And then for hypokalemia, uh, that's going to be too low potassium. Potassium pumps the heart, so that can cause dysrhythmias. And now while watching the EKG, the telemetry monitor, the nurse notices the twisting of the QRS complex and immediately informs the healthcare provider that the monitor reveals which abnormality. So that twisting like a tornado, because if we're too low of the mellow, we're not mellow at all, hypomagnesium, then we're going to be that crazy tornado. So that crazy tornado, twisty tornadoes, torsades. So what do we do? We give the mag to mellow that tornado. For the next one, the nurse places the client on a monitor and interprets the findings after analyzing the following EKG. So it looks like I'm seeing where it looks like we have a P wave followed by a QRS. So it's looking normal, normal. And then all of a sudden, something weird happens. And so based on that, it's definitely not VTAC because VTAC is that tombstone appearance. And it's definitely not atrial tachycardia because I don't have tons of those P waves. But what it does look like it's just one PVC. Six sinus syndrome, we would see a lot more than just this one blip on our radar, but that one blip on our radar, that PVC, which we don't get too nervous unless they start having runs of them. And again, that overview with the rationales. And again, what we would see, say, if it was six sinus syndrome and even um, what that would produce and what we would see. So why, again, why things are correct and incorrect. During an admission assessment, a client informs the nurse of a history of having a certain heart block. Previous records were analyzed by the nurse, and the client was found to have the following EKG the previous year. And so that we see this here, okay, I'm looking, and again, we always like to see, is there a P wave? And then after the P wave, does there follow a QRS, and what's that PR interval? The nice thing here with the closed bank is we can always, okay, it's kind of small for my eyes right now, so I'm going to make it bigger. So I see the P wave. And then the distance between the P and the R. And then I compare that to the next one. That PR interval gets a little longer. And then the next one, it gets a little longer and then drops off. And it starts again. That PR interval is short, then a little longer, then a longer, then drops off. And so for that one, that is going to be, I know it's not our third degree heart block because that's that complete heart block. And that's where the atria are doing their own thing and the ventricles are doing their own thing. There does seem to be a relationship here. And so it's a little bit less than that where it's not as bad as third degree. And it's going to be that second degree heart block. Again, because it has where the gradual progression of that distance between the, of the PR interval, and then it drops off or disappears. And again, that's going to be that second degree. Not as bad as the complete heart block, but it's getting there. For the next one, a client in the ICU received advanced cardiac life support after his monitor revealed the following rhythm, which the nurse identified as, all right, this is one of those ones from the video that you have to know by sight. So again, if you haven't watched the video, watch it right after this, because it's going to help you so much with things to stick with you, especially on your exams in the ones that you need to know by sight. So this one we see flopping around, which we know flopping around is always fibrillation. Just in case AFib was an option, how do you know the difference? Well, with VFib, because the ventricles are so much bigger, their electrical activity at QRS is also a lot bigger. So when the ventricles flop around, it takes up the entire wave. So we can't even see our P intervals right now. And so that flopping around, that squiggly line, if it was VTAC, then it would look like those tombstone sort of appearance. So the TT, VTAC, ventricular tachycardia is the tombstone appearance. And again, it gives those explanations as if this were the best answer, what would the question say? Versus if this were the best answer, what would you see? To again, help us understand why things are correct and incorrect. And for the last one, the nurse admits a client to the cardiac floor for a scheduled intervention. The initial echocardiogram depicts the following. And so I'm looking here. I see P waves. I see a QRS. But what I see is a sawtooth, sawtooth, QRS, sawtooth. Sawtooth QRS. 
So that looks like my A flutter. And so the sawtooth, sawtooth of the flutter, select it, and that's correct. Again, that characteristic sawtooth pattern. That's different than our A fifth because it'll go squiggle, 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 QRS. Squiggle, 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 QRS. And again, we love those rationales because it helps remind us about each of those conditions. Because let's say we're like, I don't remember what six sinus syndrome is. This helps you review, even though it wasn't the answer. But in the event, there is a question where it is the answer. And so again, what I love about the Simple Nursing Bank is that we can look through our results, walk through the things that are correct and understand why they're right or why they're incorrect. And it allows you to review those things. That way it sticks with you and you can remember it for your exams. And also what I love about the Simple Nursing Question Bank It's not just about doing endless practice questions, but it's also about helping you with those test-taking strategies so that way you can improve and truly understand those concepts. And you can create unlimited quizzes, track your progress, and also focus on those areas where you need the most help. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure to check out the question bank in your Simple Nursing membership. And if you're serious about acing your nursing school exams and acing the NCLEX, subscribe to the channel and for more tips and tutorials to help you along the way. Stick with us and we're going to help you to remember that information so that we will stick with the facts and then the facts will stick with you. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.